Welcome to Electron Line. So here we have the same circuit as before because now we're going to do part two. In the first part on the previous video, we set up the two equations using the KVL method by going around each of the meshes and adding up all the voltages. And then we set up the equations in matrix format like this so we can use the method of determinants to solve for the two currents I1 and I2. So the first thing we need to do is find the value of the determinant. So in this case, the determinant is equal to the product of these two which is minus j multiplied times the minus 4 plus j2 and subtract from that j2 times the minus j2. And notice again how I write down all the negative signs with parentheses just to eliminate the possibility, uh, not the possibility, the probability of making a mistake, <laughs> at least reducing the probability of making a mistake, not eliminating it. All right, so let's go ahead and work that out. So the determinant is equal to minus j times a minus 4, that would be a plus 4j, so j4, and this times this, that becomes a minus, but we have a j, j squared, a j squared is a negative 1, so minus times a minus is plus, so plus 2. And then over here we have a j2, well first of all we have minus times a minus gives me a plus, but a j times j is a j squared, that gives me minus, 2 times 2 is 4, or minus 4. So when we combine that, this is equal to uh, minus 2 plus j4. And that is our determinant. So now we need to find d1. d1. How do we find that? So d1 is equal to the determinant when we replace the first column by the values over here. So that would be equal to 3.464 plus j2. Here we get 5, and then we keep this column, which is j2, and minus 4 plus j2, like this. All right, so d1 is equal to the product of those two, so that gives us 3.464 plus j2 times the product, times this, which is a minus 4 plus j2. And now subtract from that the product of those two, which would be 5 times j2. Okay, let's work that out. So over here we'll continue, d1 is equal to, and for that we'll probably want to use a calculator. So we have 3.464 times a negative 4, that gives me a negative 13.856. Negative 13.856. Five, six. So multiplying this times this. Now this times this gives me plus j. We have to double that. So that would be a six nine two eight. So six point nine two eight. Again, the six eight. That would be nine two eight. Okay. And now we multiply this times this. So we have a minus j eight minus j8, and now we multiply this times this, we have a j squared, that's a negative 1, times 4, negative 4. So now we have the product of these two, now we have to subtract a minus j10. Okay, let's combine like terms and see what we have. So d1 is equal to we have this minus this, that gives me a minus 17.856. And here we have, well, let's see here, how about a 6.928 minus 8 minus 10 equals a minus 11.072. So minus J 11.072, and this is D1. Now we probably want to go ahead and also write out the magnitude form of those because that we're going to need those later, so let's go ahead and do that. So let's write that as uh, square this plus 17.856 squared equals, take the square root of that, and so notice we have a minus and a minus, and so we can write this as a minus 1, take the minus out, that would give a magnitude of 21.01, 21.01 with a phase angle of, so we have 11.072 divided by 
17.856. Take the inverse tangent of that, which is 31.802. 31.802 degrees. So we're going to need that later on. So if I took this format and wrote it as a magnitude phase angle format. We're going to need that. We probably also need that for D. So let's do that for D. So we can write this as. Again, I'm going to take out the negative 1. This becomes positive, that becomes negative, so that's 16 plus 4, which is 20. Square root of the 20 is 4.472. With a phase angle of, now remember that this is now negative, that's positive because I took the negative sign out. So that's a negative 2. Take the inverse tangent of that, but it's a minus 63.435. Minus 63.435 degrees. So that puts that also into the magnitude phase angle format, which we're going to need later on. How about D2? Well, D2 is equal to, when we take the matrix here, and we're going to replace the second column by those entries on the right side of the equal sign. So that gives us the following matrix. So we have a minus J, a minus J2. On the right side, we write 3.464 plus J2, and over here, a positive 5. All right, let's work that out. So this is equal to the product of those two, which is a minus J times the positive 5, minus the product of those two. Remember how we keep track of the negative signs? So that's a minus J2 multiplied times 3.464 plus J2. That should be a 2. Better looking 2. All right, now... Let's work this out. Over here, this becomes equal to a minus J5. Over here, I have a minus times a minus, that's a plus. J2 times this, that gives me plus J6.928. And multiplying this times this, I get a minus times a minus is plus, but a J times J gives me minus again, 4. All right, so this becomes equal to minus 4 and a plus j, 1.928. And if I'm going to write that as a magnitude phase angle format, so this becomes equal to, I'm pulling out the negative 1. Now the magnitude would be 16 plus 1.928 squared. Take the square root, it's 4.440. 4.440 with a phase angle of, now remember I took out the negative sign, so this is negative, this is positive, we end up with a negative angle. So 1.928 divided by 4, and the phase angle of that would be 25.734, minus 25.734 degrees, like this. So now we also have D2 in terms of the real imaginary part, or the magnitude and phase angle format. Now we're ready to solve for the two currents. I1 is equal to D1 over D. D1 is right here, negative 1 times 21.01 with a phase angle of 31.802 degrees, divide by D, and D is equal to a negative 1 times 4.472, with a phase angle of negative 63.435 degrees. This, so that becomes, the negatives cancel out, 21.01 divided by 4.472 gives us a 4.698, 4 4.698, that's of course in amps, with a phase angle of, yes, phase angle of, we have 31.802 added, because when we bring it up, it becomes positive, 63.435, and that's phase angle of 95.237 degrees. Okay, so this here is I1. And we might as well put the units amps on there, because it is, of course, amps. Then I2, that's equal to D2 over D. Now D2, we have right here, that's a negative one, 
times 4.440 with a phase angle of minus 25.734 degrees. And we divide that by negative 1 times 4.472 with a phase angle of minus 63.435 degrees. All right, the negatives cancel out. We have 4.440 divided by 4.472. That is... 0 0.993 with a phase angle of 63.435 minus 25.734 equals and that becomes a positive 37.701 degrees of course that's in amps and that equals I2 and there we have the solution for I2 the solution for I1 and that is how we find the currents in that circuit. So mesh analysis works like a charm. It's a lot of work, even for a simple circuit like that, but it does work. So we also, of course, have some other techniques. We'll show you some other techniques of how to solve these types of circuits, but this is definitely a very good method, especially when you can then throw this into a computer or a computer program to work it out very easily. And that is how it's done. I think it is correct. <laughs> Let's take a look. 4.698, yeah, 95, yes, 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 it looks, looks good. <laughs>